Jesus of all truth. This is that, what does it say in um, Isaiah chapter what? 55, I believe. 54. Yeah, 54. That there's a, there's a, oh, what is it now? The Lord will lift up a standard. A word will come to you. A word will emerge out of your heart. And it will come out of your mouth. And it destroys the works of the evil one. That intention that he had for you, it can't work. No weapon formed against you will prosper is what it says in the book of Isaiah chapter 54. It says, and, and this is for our security. Just so that you would know, behold, I have created the smith that blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work. I have created the spoiler to destroy. The devil's a created being. Where we cannot see him physically, he affects the body. He affects the mind. God, who created him, will not let him destroy you. But we are supposed to be the ones who trust the Father and give our whole heart to him. Give our mind, will, and emotions to him. I don't remember why my finger was in Luke. But it says here in verse 17, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises up against you in judgment, you will condemn. This is the inheritance of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, saith the Lord. We get it from abiding in Christ. When we abide in him and his words abide in us, we can say, we can bind, and we can loose. We can ask the Father for what we need, and we receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. There's no weapon formed against us that can prosper. And every tongue that which, which rises against you and your household, it, it won't prevail. No weapon formed against you will prosper. It cannot prevail because the word of God is in your mouth. Fear doesn't do that for you. Laziness won't do that. Drugs won't do it for you. Sex won't do it for you. Living according to how we feel. Being emotional and screaming and yelling and snatching and throwing and cussing won't do it for you. peace of God that surpasses all understanding. That's a whole nother story. What did Jesus say? Hey, be not troubled. He said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. He has given us his, he, he's, he, he's, did he, how do you say it now? My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I want to give you something that gives you rest in your soul that you would not have high blood pressure. That you won't have a heart attack because of fear. Fear is false evidence appearing real. It looks like it's real, but it's really not. Faith is faith is what is believing what we cannot see. Of course, that works in both ways, doesn't it? We can assume a thing very fast, but with the word of the God, the word of the Lord, it never fails. He said in the book of Isaiah that where he sends his word, it will accomplish what he sent it to do, and it will not come back void. It says in the in, in, in Psalms that the, he honors his name, his word above his name. And the name of Jesus is above every name that can be named. And as we're in him, and he is in us, as his word is abiding in us, and we're abiding in this relationship with him, this word is coming forth out of our mouth. And the Lord is honoring his word. And angels, by the way, are hearkening to the voice of the Lord. And they're fighting on our behalf. No weapon formed against us can prosper because of who he is. We gotta remember the end of the story has already been written. Christ won. He got us the victory. No, oh, no. Now I wasn't finished with, with 2 Corinthians yet. But let me just read that little that little bit out of 
Luke because we've been given power. We've been given authority. Authority. To trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Psalm 91 says the same thing. He put angels in charge of our lives to catch us if we should stub our foot against the stone. And, 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 and in, this, in, the same, in the same thing, he's saying, in the, in the second verse, he's saying that the lions and the, the cobra, the, the, the great lions, the small lions, the, the adders, the same thing, snakes and dragon, we're be, we'll be able to trample on them, put them under our feet, put them under our feet. We're making a footstool for Christ. And if we're really going to make a footstool for Christ, we, we got to get in love with him for real. And loving him isn't just in word only. It's also in deed. It's in our work. Laying down this life before him, walking out our soul salvation with, in, in awe of God. In the fear of the Lord. Remember, that's the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. It's been given to us to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. It's been given to us to know what the Lord is talking about. It's been given to us to know what the kingdom of God entails, what it's all about. We've been taken out of the kingdom of this world. We've been taken out of the darkness and brought into light where we can see everything around us and understand and know and say and proclaim the word of the Lord and do the good works that he gave us to do and prosper in this life and in the next. After all, we are building our treasures in heaven. But let's do this. Let's cast our care before the Lord or else you're not building anything. If we don't cast our care before the Lord, we're toiling. We're, we're uh, what does it say? Psalm 127, I believe it is. Unless the Lord builds the house, the the lab, the, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. What does it mean? It, it means, uh, let me say it in my own words now. Unless the Lord builds your house, build, you are his house. You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus laying down this heart, this mind, will, and emotions before the Lord is a thing, man. It's a thing. We, we lay down these thoughts because they're not his thoughts. We lay down this, 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 this will of ours. This mm, Another place to go now, is it? When I think about our will, I think about our intentions. In Hebrews chapter, uh, uh, chapter 4. See, he knows the thoughts and the intentions of your heart. In the book of James, it says, because of your intentions, your motives, you can't get what you pray for. You can't shut down this demonic activity in your life and in the lives around you. You're powerless because of your, your intentions. Our intentions are to, supposed to be to glorify the Father, to glorify the Son. We want to see their glory, them lifted up. If when, when Jesus is lifted up, he draws all men to himself. And I know it's talking about him being on the cross and he's going to be lifted up. And that's the way that he's going to be gone. But you know what? We got to go back to Moses when he lifted up that snake and all the eyes were on them. Everybody whose eyes looked at that snake, they were healed from the plague that was in the earth. But here I go, I'm coming all the way back to say this, that Jesus, when he's lifted up in our hearts, in our mind, will, and emotions, when he becomes first and we're crying out to him, when we're meditating in the word and, 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 and going and grabbing hold of the kingdom, taking it by force, is putting God first and saying, yes, the situation exists. But I'm giving this situation to you. And the way that we give it to him is by the word. We lay it down and we pick up the word and put the word on it. We lay it down and we pick up the word and put the word on it. We lay it down and pick up the word and put the word on it. And this word works. It will not turn void. It will not return void. It will accomplish what the Lord said it would, he would do. He will perfect that which concerns you. 
He will take care of it. It's his job. He's the father. We're the children. And the father takes care of his children. Okay, so if the Lord, <laughs> unless the Lord builds your house, builds you, you're his house, we labor in vain to try to build it. Not by might nor by power. It's by the Holy Spirit. The mountains are moved by the Holy Spirit. He's the one who reminds us of all truth. <laughs> he is our light. God, God Almighty has given us light. He's given us awareness of himself. And he's over everything. Unless the Lord guards you. We'll watch. We, 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 we will be awake. We, we, the watchman stays awake in vain. You'll be awake in vain. We can trust him. He is faithful who began the work in us that he has begun. Back to Luke, and I'm, I'm almost done. Back to Luke, it says, 16, uh, chapter 10, verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy, singing, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Take note of that. Hold on to it. See, we try to do a work before we get the understanding, before we get hold of the knowledge. Behold, I give... I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give to you authority to trample on the serpents, the scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any, mean, any means hurt you you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you, but I've given you power. See, he's going to teach us how to trample on these things that are coming against the knowledge of God. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, he says, that, you, that the, subjects are spir are, are, the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In, the in, in, that, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said I thank you father Lord of heaven and earth that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to 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 babes even so father for it seemed good in your sight and I leave it right there he's delivered us from the power of the enemy we're not to rejoice in fact that we have power over him we rejoice that our names are written in heaven and rejoice because God is who he is and he, he is not going to change. We give him praise and we give him glory. We lift up the name of the Lord. You, you know in Psalm 8, again, I always come back to this because he said he's revealed it to the babes, right? He's revealed this wisdom and this knowledge and given us power and authority. We are babes. And in Psalm 8 it said we are babes, right? He's ordained his babes and sucklings to praise him. Our praise stills the enemy and the avenger. The, the Lord will still him. He will stop him in his tracks because he hears our heart to him. Okay. Second Corinthians. <laughs> I can't stop. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. We, we, we've got to keep it right there. Because a lot of people just skip over that verse, and they don't look at, who, you know, they're mighty through Him, to the pulling down of strongholds. It's all in Him. And that's why we have to learn how to rest come enter his rest come sit down and let him be the one that fills us up the spirit of god in romans chapter 8 is teaching us how to mortify this body this mind will and emotions how to get it subject get control over ourselves what did jesus conquer he he overcame the flesh his own flesh his mind will and emotions he overcame his soul and we have to overcome ours. We have to walk out our soul salvation. Work out our soul salvation. Soul salvation with fear and trembling. And first John, what is it? Peter? 
But anyway, <laughs> it says, you know, in the prayer that Paul is talking about, he says, I, I, I pray above all for your wealth, health, and even your wealth, health, and even as your soul prospers. Wait, wait, wait. Third John. Third John. Chapter. Well, third John. It's not a chapter, is it? But beloved. Uh, verse 2. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health even as your soul prospers. Even as your soul prospers. Truly as your soul prospers. I want you to, to prosper in your soul. To prosper in your soul is to bring it before the Lord and let it be renewed in the knowledge of God. It's being transformed in the knowledge of God. Is it being, you're no longer born from the God of this world, born from, from the world system, born from your parents, but you're born from above by the Spirit of God. The Spirit is giving spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication to you, and he's teaching you how to mortify the deeds of your flesh as you walk day to day. As we walk out this world, this soul salvation with fear and trembling in the knowledge of God, in the wisdom of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One brings understanding. It's understanding who He is. And our heart is in awe with Him. And our spirit becomes first. And our, and our soul becomes subject to God. And not just running amok. Getting upset over every wind and wave of doctrine that is happening in this life. We live for Him. We live in Him, to Him, through Him, just as He is in us. Read John chapter 17 and the desire of Jesus that we would be in Him. Being in Him results in love. You know, we can't love one another unless we remain in Him, unless we have this personal relationship with Him sit down and really get to know him be be naked in his presence we already are i mean hebrews chapter 4 again we are bare and naked every creature is open before the presence of god there's nothing in you that he cannot see no motive no desire no thought everything is bare and naked before him to whom we have to do one day all will be before him Back to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Casting down all arguments. Arguments. Now, I don't, I'm not talking about people. Maybe Paul was in the crowd and, and they were talking about people and the, the situations and circumstances that were happening in that day. But I'm talking about bringing our soul and making it subject to God. Judgment begins in the household of God. You are his house. Judgment has started in you. That you work all things out together for the that you work all these things out and you give them, giving them to him, giving them to him. All these situations, all these circumstances, like Jesus said, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you look away? Why didn't you keep your eyes on me? Why didn't you keep your mind on me? He never fails. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, spiritual arguments, things that are going on with you in your house, going on with you as you walk down the road, going on with you while you look at the news, watch Facebook, whatever, Snapchat, whatever you're watching, whatever you're getting your information from, however life is going right now. There is many voices in the world. And they seriously want to kill, steal, and destroy. They want you to get on the wide path. Get off that narrow path. Listen to me. Casting down arguments and every high thing exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. I'm talking about inside yourself. Not people. 
because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're mighty through God, and the pulling down of strongholds. I'm talking about in me, in my mind, in my heart, in my body, in, around my household. Whatever is going on personally with me, I need to learn how to cast my cares before the Lord and let the Lord fight my battle. See, he's going to remind me of the truth and the word is going to come out of my heart, out of my mouth. It's going to come up from my heart, out of my mouth. And it's going to affect the situation. Because if, we're, if we are reminded by the truth, by the Holy Spirit who reminds us of all truth, then the power of the Holy Spirit is going to be in it and the mountain has to move. The battle, it, 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 it has to be, it's won by the knowledge of God. By the wisdom of God. I have escaped corruption through Christ. He is the one who is the word that became flesh and that word is dwelling in my heart. That word is written in me. And I am saying what I hear him say. And I'm doing what I hear him do. And I have peace. I cannot be shaken. I cannot be moved. The kingdom of God is completely unshakable, but everything in this world is shakable. The flesh is shakable. The mind, will, and emotions is shakable. But we're trying to make something that's unshakable. We're trying to get into the place that cannot be shaken. Verse 6. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled, do, and it says, do, not, do you look at, the things, at things according to the outward appearance? I, lo I love that verse. Do you look at things after the outward appearance? That ought to tell you something right there. Because if we look at things through the eyes of our flesh, how can, be, how can we know that we're right? How can we know that we're not being deceived by the God of this world? Keep yourselves in love with God. Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world telling you right now, I don't care what people look like, how good they look, I don't care how well they dress or how well they talk, the enemy, he masquerades as an angel of light. That means that he masquerades as something that you're going to like, something that appeals to you. Draw near to God. Draw near to God. Forget all this mess out here, this outward stuff. Draw near to God because the enemy who, who wants to, to, to deceive will deceive. The spirit of deception has been poured out in the earth. Cleave to God. Cleave to the Word. Cleave to the Holy Spirit. Fight the good fight of faith. I was going to go on, but I, I, I better stop. Read Romans chapter 8 for yourself and, and, and read it again and, and, and read it again until you understand how the Spirit is giving birth to your spirit and you're being born from above. How you are seated in heavenly places with Christ. That's in Ephesians. And the spiritual blessings are there, but we got to sit in Christ. we got to press in and take the kingdom of our God. The kingdom of God is suffering violence, and we take it by force. This belongs to me, and I'm going to have it. God gave it to me. He opened his arms wide and said, I so love the world that I've given my only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe on Christ Jesus would not die, but have everlasting life. You wouldn't perish. And perishing is the lake of fire. But also perishing is what I'm currently living through right now now but then we remember the benefits that god has given us in psalm 103 bless the lord O oh my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all our iniquities all of our he's forgiven us all of our iniquity he heals us all of our diseases he redeems our life from destruction he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies he satisfies your your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He's got good things in mind for us. This is a promise of God to restore our soul. This soul. We've got to pick it up and put it right where it goes. Put it on Christ. 
because the only way to the Father is through Him. And the only way to deny the flesh, the mind, will, and emotions, the soul, and live the life that God intended, the only way to get it renewed and restored and made whole is to submit ourselves to the one that we're being made in the image of, the image of Christ. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I get the word in your face, International. Get the word in your face. Eat him up. Drink him up. Fill up your cup with this living, life-giving, free, this word that brings freedom, liberty. With the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. There's freedom in your gut, freedom in your heart, freedom in your soul. And it's pure and it's clean and it's holy. And you can rejoice because you're not bound by the chains and the fetters of this life. There's no more grief or sorrow for you to, to walk in bearing it on your back. The God of peace is with you. And you can walk in the fulfillment of God's promise for you. He'll take care of you and he'll take care of your house. He'll get those kids free. He'll, get the, he'll save them. He'll take care of what you need. Trust him today. Because he is our life. Bye-bye.